Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to video number 7 in the IC7100 from A to Z series. After a long pause, it's good to get back to the march through all of the radio's features. Like many modern radios, the 7100 has so many memories that it seems like you need memories to help you remember what's in the memories. There's a lot to cover, so we'll be looking at this over a few videos. Let's get started. The IC7100 has three types of programmable memories. There's regular memories. There are program scan edge memories for the scanning. And then there are call channel memories. Let's take a look at each type. The regular memories are divided into five banks of 99 channels each. The banks are labeled A through E, as you can see here. And that gives you a total of 495 regular memories. Each memory stores quite a few different parameters. It stores the operating frequency, stores the operating mode, it stores the IF filter selection of one, two, or three. It stores split operation, which wouldn't make sense here on FM, but for HF. It stores the duplex information, including the direction for FM and repeaters. It stores the squelch mode or the digital tones uh, controlled squelch mode, DTCS and it stores the frequencies or the DTCS code for each of those. It also stores the destination call sign in D-Star mode, and it stores the call sign squelch or digital code squelch on off and the digital code for D-Star mode. And then finally, it stores an optional memory name that can be up to 16 characters. The five banks that are there are not connected to each other in any way. So there, it's basically five different sets of 99 independent memories. So for example, if you're using the memory scan function, which we'll cover in a later episode, you cannot have it scan across all five banks. It'll scan the memories in whichever bank you have selected at the moment. And you can use the different banks however you like. Um, you might have one bank set up, as I've got here in bank A, for FM uh, and repeater usage. You might have bank B set up for HF frequencies. Um, you might have, if you have two different locations, you might have one bank set up for one location, another bank set up for the second location, and maybe a third bank set up for mobile use. Um, and I have, in fact, in my case, I have bank E set up here for um, uh, aviation frequency channels that I like to listen to. Of course, these are receive only uh, when you program. Uh, you can program any frequency you want into the memories, but if it's not in an amateur band, the radio will not let you transmit there. The user manual talks about switching between memory mode and VFO mode, and you can do that in one of two ways. If you're on uh, memory page one, you've got the V slash M button, and if you press the VM, it goes to VFO mode. If you press it again, it goes back to memory mode. You can also just touch the memory channel VFO or memory indicator here on the touchscreen, and that will toggle between the modes as well. Throughout the manual, it talks about this and it says you may press these buttons once or twice to get into the mode, and it's a little bit of a confusing way of saying that these are toggles. Each time you press it, it switches modes, and so in reality, you're probably going to press it zero or once if you're depending on whether you're in the mode you want to be in or not. I suppose they're talking about once or twice if you touch it anyway and then you realize you've put it into the wrong mode, you can put it back. You can also see which mode you're in very easily over here where the memory channel is displayed. The memory channel and bank are always displayed here 
on the right side of the display and then directly above that number it'll say memo if you're in memory mode and if you're in VFO mode it will display VFO and then it'll show you whether you're on VFO A or B. So that's always there and available to tell you which mode you're in. Another nice feature about the memory channels is that they are all tunable. And let me show you what I mean by that. We'll go into memory and I have actually up here uh, an HF frequency. So in memory 19 I have a 20 meter frequency here. And if I just start rotating the tuning knob I can change the frequency. So the nice part is, is if I had, uh, for example, a net frequency on here and the net moves up or down because of QRM, you can just go to the memory channel and start tuning. This is not saved back to the memory channel. It's just for this, um, well, for this session or this moment, if you will. If you want to go back to the programmed uh, frequency, you can just turn away from the memory channel and back, go to the next memory up or down, and then it'll come back to what was programmed there. Or you can just switch between VFO mode and then back to memory, and it'll go to what was programmed. So that's a very handy feature. Uh, again, mostly on HF, if you need to tune up or down from what you have programmed in the memory. You can also change the filter settings if you need to. Maybe if it's noisier, and again, if you toggle and toggle back, it'll go to what was programmed for that. Um, the one unfortunate feature of this is if you are using memories for 2 meters or 440 FM and repeaters, and you're mobile, this feature can be a little bit annoying because if you program a repeater or whatever frequency, you can tune away from it by just, you know, hitting the knob. And if you're mobile and you accidentally hit the knob, that can be a little bit uh, frustrating, especially if you didn't notice that you did it. In another video, when we talk about mobile operation, I'll talk about a couple of techniques to help avoid that problem. As we look through the memories here, I'm going to scroll through a few of them. You can see that the memory displays the frequency uh, that you're on and again the modes and then if the memory has a memory name programmed you'll see that the frequency switches to smaller digits and then the name appears directly below the frequency. That's the default mode um, that it will always display the name in addition to the frequency. If for some reason you didn't want that you can press the quick menu button here and you can change that. I'm already on that setting. I'll go to the top. It's on the second page down. There is a name display option. And if we turn that off, now you'll see even if the memory has a name, it still just displays the frequency the same as all of the others. I actually like the name display, so I'm going to turn that back on for my use. One other thing here as I scroll through, you'll notice that as I get to blank memories, if you're on a blank memory channel, the entire display is blank. There's no frequency, there's no filter, no mode, and it displays the tag blank next to the memory number. The little tag there is useful because if you're in VFO mode and you're scrolling through memories and you want to store something, you can see which memories are blank without having to jump out of VFO mode. So that's a nice little feature for that. In addition to the regular memories, there are two pairs of memories that are dedicated specifically to 2 meters and to 440 use, and these are called the call channel memories. And if you scroll down from below channel 1, and it doesn't matter what bank you're on, uh, there are no banks for the call channel memories. You'll see the channel 2 and channel 1, and they're labeled with 430 for the 430 megahertz memories, and then 144 for the 2 meter memories. 
And if I go into memory mode here, you'll see that they have a pre-assigned name of call CH. And at least on the U.S. version of this radio, both call channels for 2 meters are programmed to 146.52. And both of the call channels for 440 are programmed to 446.0, again with the name call channel. So I'm going to go ahead and program something a little different here on one of them. So I'm going to program call channel 1 to a simplex frequency that I like to use just for some local use. I'm going to program in 146.55 and no other tones or anything else. And to program that, I'm just going to make sure that I'm on the call channel I want to program. So I'm on 144 call channel 1. And I'm going to press and hold memory right. And then we can now see that that's 146.55 has been programmed in there. And the name has been programmed in there. And again, you can change the name. We'll take a look at that in another episode as well. And then one other unique feature about the call channels is that if you are on um, two meters, whether you're in memory mode, and we'll get to a, a regular memory here, whether you're in memory mode or in VFO mode, you can quickly go to the call channels by pressing the tuner slash call button. Uh, this button, it's a dual function button on HF. This activates the tuner if you have one attached. But on 2 meters and 440, this brings up the call channel. And if you access the call channel with this button, it'll just say call 1, or you can use the memory switch to rotate to call 2. But it'll show it as call with the number. The other unique thing, if you access the memory with the call button, is that it is not tunable in this mode. So if you use the call button, it brings up the call channel memory and you can't change the frequency with the tuning dial. And if you press the call button again, it'll go back to whatever frequency and mode you were in prior to that. Again, on 2 meters or on 440. You need to be on 2 meters or 440 for this to work. And, of course, if I'm on the 440 megahertz band, when you press the call button, it brings the call channel up for that band. So this button is specific to the 2 meter and 440 bands. And, um, oh, the one other thing I was going to show you, if you do access the call frequencies from the menu or from the mem yeah excuse me from the memory knob which you can do so if i'm in memory mode and i turn to this call channel then it does come up and i'm on this channel and now it is tunable so if you access it with the memory knob it is tunable if you access it with the call button it is not tunable that's all we're going to cover for now we'll continue with more memory functions and features next time the companion website for the channel is now up and running. Please check it out at a to z dot tech. There's also a link to it in the description, and you'll see it at the bottom of the screen as well. If you found this video helpful, please consider clicking on the like button. If you enjoy the channel or find it useful, please consider clicking on the subscribe button. You can also click on the little bell icon to get notified of new episodes. As always, Thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.